I'd like to give you a quick little demonstration here on some on some maintenance you can do to keep your machine uh, running nice and smooth and that is to clean the bobbin area one of the uh, things that makes it a lot easier is if you remove your foot if you remove your needle then you're not sticking yourself the first thing you do is you remove your bobbin cover that's that's this one leave it in place for this next step you don't have to latch it in there leave it in place because what you're going to do now is you're going to remove the one of the nice things about a baby lock one of the best things to use to take off the uh, needle plate is a nickel you can also use a, screw, a little screwdriver that you can get in there or you can use one of these tools that come with a lot of the machines but what I find that I have on hand most often is a nickel and it works really well on a baby lock other machines it does but uh, some machines won't accept that nickel when you take these little screws out it's a good idea to have this bobbin cover on because if you drop a screw it doesn't fall up it falls down and it falls in to the bottom of the sewing machine in here and I don't care how much you turn it upside down and shake it it will not come out so I remove them and then you can take everything off take your bobbin case out and this is the area you want want to clean this brush here comes with a lot of the machines be sure and get between your feed dogs because those little felt pads that that accumulate in there aren't supposed to be there so you can brush it out with that brush here's one that i found out of an old machine someplace and you can use this to clean out right there that's what you're looking for and this is a floor model that hasn't had a lot of use so you can imagine what it's like and it depends on the thread you're using the fabric you're throwing you're sewing and uh, but that's exactly what you're looking for a chip brush what I did with mine is I cut some of them off so that it would be a little bit shorter you can blow it all you can brush it all around in there just to make sure that everything is clean canned air works be very careful with canned air if you shake it turn it upside down if it runs out it can spit all over the place and that's not good for the inside of the machine if that happens I would suggest that you let it dry really well once you get everything in on a baby lock some machines you have to put in the bobbin first on a baby lock they recommend putting in the needle plate first and I'll tell you why in a second again just lay that on there and then if you drop one of these little screws you're not dropping it down into the bottom of the machine don't ask me how I know once you get them started and in the hole and started and started then you can remove it give you, give you a good idea how that stuff sits in there with a sewing machine you don't want to get carried away and make things too tight However, with a sewing machine, there's a lot of movement and a lot of vibration. It has to be tight enough not to come loose, but it can't be so tight that it, uh, it comes apart on you. So I just make them nice and firm and snug. When you put your bobbin in, there's a little white dot. I hope you can see it. There's a little white dot here, and there's a little white dot right here. Those dots line up. There's a little stitch finger. Let me get a pointer. And there's a little stitch finger right here. And that goes against this little spring. And your white dots line up. You'll have a little bit of a wiggle jiggle. Not much. That's so your thread can pass through that stitch finger. You then 
snap on your, and you're ready to ready for business. Just put your needle back in, put your foot back on, thread it, and go. And remember, this is what you're looking for. Thanks, and I'll try to get more demonstrations as we as uh, as this uh, goes on.